This is how you're gonna work out how much protein you need per day on the carnivore diet. And this might surprise you as there's a lot that goes into it. But I'm gonna take a deep dive into exactly what goes into it bit by bit, explain the science and how to work it out just for yourself. Whether you're thriving on just a lion diet, steaks only, or a mixed animal food diet, this video is definitely for you if you're concerned about your intake of protein on the carnivore diet. So what impacts this? What impacts how much we actually need? So I'm gonna go for a few things which actually impact it on a scientific basis. And you're gonna be very surprised at the outcome as how much these reference ranges and guidelines can vary depending on your age, status, gender, and different genetic polymorphisms and SNPs. So there's these various different SNPs that affect protein metabolism. And what we're looking at initially, the most obvious one, is the MTHFR gene mutation. Now around 10 to 30% of the population globally carry this mutation, so it's very common. Now it can lead to increased homocysteine levels, indirectly affecting how your body metabolizes protein. If you have this mutation, you might need up to 10 to 20% more protein than the average person to meet your anabolic and metabolic needs to build muscle and lose fat. Next, we have the CYP1A2 gene. About 35% of people have this, and it's basically a slow metabolizer of caffeine, fun enough. Now, this doesn't just affect your caffeine habits or your intake, your metabolism, but it can also mean a 5 to 10% increase in protein requirements due to changes in liver metabolism. Then there's the FTO gene. It's often called the obesity gene. I don't think obesity is genetic, guys. I think it's mostly dietary, if you ask me. What do I know? Nutritionist. I know approximately 16% of people carry this variant, and it can actually lead to high protein intakes, again, around 10 to 15% or more. This is due to the body's tendency to hold onto more fat rather than build more muscle. Now, this one may not apply to many people, but muscle wasting conditions such as sarcopenia can affect about 10% of people over the age of 60 worldwide. If you're dealing with this, your protein needs can jump 20 to 30% more than baseline to help preserve muscle mass. Now this one I struggle to say. Cachexia, cachexia, I don't know. Um, often seen severe illnesses like cancer. I've seen this firsthand myself volunteering on a cancer ward for four and a half years. And it actually affects around 1% of the population. Not so common, obviously, but if you're in this state, your body could require 50 to 100% more protein per day because of this extreme muscle breakdown status of the body. Now, another one on this sort of category is Duchenne muscular dystrophy, a rare conditioning affecting one in three and a half thousand boys globally. So quite common, I guess. Protein needs to be increased by about 10 to 20% if you have this to support muscle repair. And this is even for boys in a carnivorous diet. It applies to everyone. Next is the diet and lifestyle factors. So if you're vegetarian or vegan, what they find in different studies is, yeah, generally speaking, people on the Western diet, whether they be following a mixed food omnivorous diet or a vegetarian vegan diet, the protein intake seems to be around about 70 to 72 grams per person in the US alone, apparently, at least the last time I checked. Problem is the DIAS score, D-I-A-A-S score, means the digestibility of absorption and assimilation of protein is significantly less in a vegetarian diet. Now this is even true if you mix protein sources from plant foods. So you can't just have almond butter on a bit of bread and chuck some, I don't know, soy, tofu, crap on it, and make it a complete protein. That's not how it works. It doesn't have the main anabolic signaling amino acid such as leucine, carnitine, taurine, tyrosine, and a few other things like that which are needed in high amounts in the body to perform optimally. Now, around about 8% of people worldwide follow a vegan or vegetarian diet. So this could be relevant to you. It's probably one of the more common issues with people that might need more protein. And for the out athletes out there, we're looking at people that do resistance training, endurance training of any kind, marathons, all that sort of luck. You're likely to need about 50 to 100% more protein than someone who's sedentary. This can be even higher if you're particularly high trained. If you're elite, you're doing a lot of resistance training, a lot of stuff during the day that number could jump probably two or threefold that even. So don't be surprised. And it's a big jump, but on a carnivore for diet, it's really not that hard to hit those numbers. You just have to follow your appetite. And if you're training, recovering right, your appetite will be best served to suit your needs. There's also some hormonal conditions. So hyperthyroidism, 
hyper too much. Affects around one to two percent of the population globally. Um, basically, metabolism is running overdrive, which means this condition can increase your protein to intake by around ten to twenty percent more. So this is a much faster rate of actual break protein breakdown. So it's not that your body requires more so much in that you're using more. It's effectively just burning off more, which is really crap. Now let's flip the script a little bit and look at factors that can actually decrease your protein needs, even on a carnivore diet. These are very important to consider. Some people do eat too much protein, particularly men, funnily enough, young men in particular. I know who you are. So the first one is an inborn error of metabolism. So first is PKU, phenylketonuria. I've met one person in my life with this condition. They have to eat a very low protein diet or a diet that is at least isolated in the format of phenylalanine. Phen phenylalanine. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Phen phenylalanine. I didn't say that out loud. Anyway, it's very rare. One in 10,000, 15,000 people worldwide. If you have PKU, you might need to actually reduce your protein intake by 50 to 100%. So this could mean... You're eating like one meal with, I don't know, a steak in each day, maybe, if you're lucky. Not an ideal situation to be in. The next one is quite a funny one. It's called maple syrup urine disease. And I didn't think this was real when I did the research on this, but um, it's even rarer, affecting about one in 185,000 infants globally. And people with MSUD need to cut back on protein by about 60 to 70% per day to avoid toxic buildup from certain amino acids. So yes, it is possible that some people cannot tolerate much protein, as we've seen. Now, there's a few more points to go over. I'm going to get through it quickly for you guys. I know you haven't got much time. Chronic conditions affecting protein requirements. So this is things like chronic kidney disease. Now, this is about 10% of the global population. Quite common, in my opinion. And if you have this, protein needs to be reduced, particularly. Um, the problem is the buildup of nitrogenous waste materials within the body. Now, I'm not saying that it causes kidney disease or kidney malfunction, but in the instance where your body's struggling to deal with the byproducts and waste of too much protein, um, especially when you've got CKD, your kidney function, your EGFR is like 20, you probably want to err on the side of caution and just say, okay, maybe I'm not going to eat that, I don't know, 60 ounce ribeye steak at the steakhouse. Probably not a good idea. Just eat to satiety, don't do any food challenges, don't be daft, that's the main thing with this one. Now, the next one is liver disease, also quite common. About 4.5% of the global population, which can mean cutting protein down by about 20 to 40%. Now, this can help avoid complications such as hepatic encephalopathy. These are hard words, guys. I'm really struggling here to read these. But basically, you're going to struggle to actually get enough protein. That's going to serve its purpose in the body. So... You're going to want to reduce it by about 20 to 40 percent like i said now lastly this one's um kind of on the flip side of the hyperthyroidism we're going to take it to the other side so we're going to look at the hypothyroidism meaning too little thyroid hormone output this can be for a number of different reasons it seems to be quite common hashimoto's thyroiditis it seems to be very common amongst people in the carnival community mostly because they come from a position where they're not healthy to begin with and the people that come to this way of eating see a lot of anecdotes online from people with Hashimoto's. It's quite common. So you're going to see a lot of women out there, probably age, over the age of about 40, dealing with this condition on the carnivore diet. Now, this might mean you actually need about 5 to 10% less protein. So it's not going to largely impact you. It just means you're eating one less egg a day or something you're daft, maybe two eggs less. Not the biggest deal, but basically it's because your body's metabolic rate is lower. Now, if you wanted more insights into this, how to work at your protein intake, I'd highly recommend this book that I'm about to put an ad up for. Just a quick ad, 10 seconds or so, but it will really, really go into detail about what you need as someone on the carnivore diet in regards to protein intake. Introducing Beef Up Carnivore Bodybuilding Bible, 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 Bible. The ultimate guide for men and women to lose fat and build muscle. And the best part, carnivore. It's only $12. Don't miss out on the most detailed resource available. Get your copy now at compositionconsultant.com. And there you have it. How much protein you need on the carnivore diet? Answer is, who knows? Who knows? Definitely not me. But my rough, broad guideline is somewhere between about 1.5 to 2 grams per kilo of lean body mass per day. That means the, the fat-free mass of your body, essentially, near enough. Otherwise, you can work by something like 1 gram per centimeter of height 
that's quite good as well if you're not too sure on your body weight and body fat. These are all different sort of markers and ways to go around measuring it. Um, I've seen people go as high as about 4 grams of protein per day. I've done that myself. I've gone up to 4.5 grams of protein per day and even actually 1.5.5 grams of protein per day, which did equate to something like 530 to 550 grams of protein per day every single day for nine months straight. Um, quite good. A lot of food. Not great digestion though. But anyway, I've got some different videos on that. I'll link that one below as well. So it's just basically talking about my results using 350 grams of protein plus per day on a carnival diet during a bodybuilding contest preparation to build muscle and lose fat. Now, understanding these can help you tailor your diet to your unique needs. If you found this video helpful, leave a like, comment, subscribe if you have not yet already. Hit the notification bell and you're going to get all the insights from me as they come up. And hopefully you won't get unsubscribed like a lot of people do. Apparently. I don't know. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Hopefully it's been insightful to you. Remember, Beef Up Carnival Bodybuilding Bible. The best book for building muscle and losing fat on the carnival diet. Remember to check out the references below if you're curious about any of these things. If you want some answers for different things in this video, you know, just book a consultation, compositionconsultant.com. Be happy to see you there. Cheers. Build muscle and lose fat on the carnival diet.